Howdy out there, this is Ed, the CNC dude here in, uh, on Christmas break, reviewing my specs for our new CNC machine we're getting. I had to get electrical specs so we can start prepping. Uh, the UMC 350 HD is now called the EDU. I heard that more than 80% of these 350s are going to schools. So they have a 350 a 350HD and a 350HD EDU. The 350 is based on the DT1 platform, I believe, which is the 30 taper tool holder uh, spindle. Uh, the 350HD is based on the DM platform. And the HD EDU is, is the school package. Now, what do you get? All the UMCs should come with probing anyway. And uh, so you get everything you need. You got 10,000 uh, RPM spindle at 20 horsepower, I believe. And I was looking up the specs, which is the same wiring we're using for the ST10 lathe. So that's a 20 horsepower machine. It's a 40 amp breaker, 40 amp limit, I guess. I'll have to go check that. Versus the VF machine, which is a much uh, needs a 70 amp system, and the TM machine is much lower horsepower, so it's like in between. What do you get here? What do you get? We get uh, the 10,000 RPM spindle. We get 18 tool holder. We got the whips probing system. We get a big 55 gallon coolant tank. We do not get a chip auger. I think probably, especially for schools, chip auger should be a standard. Um, I think when you're buying these machines, sometimes you got to be kind of knowledgeable because your purchasing department may not be the the knowledgeable ones. Um, what else do we have here? Safe mode. Everybody's run safe run before. I hope. And high-speed machining. I thought, uh, I think in Montana H Tech we discussed about how, how high-speed machining should be a standard for schools, especially as we're all getting into the CAD CAM world. It's going to use tracoidal milling and stuff like that. And 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 a byproduct would be that we're we inadvertently also influencing industry to get better options when they buy equipment. So I think personally it should come with chip auger and high speed machining as the package. So standard program memory, one gig. Uh, sometimes I get confused on the upgraded memory. I think it's either just turning on the hard drive, I think, sometimes for memory expansion, I think. And what else do we get? And a platter. I think in the work holding, we should have the uh, Haas self-centering vice or some vice options in here to get the get the machine in the door that's like kind of like ready to go. Especially if you already have 48 tapered tooling, so you can share that. All right, what else do we got in here? So that's about it. So we got also, we got uh, lathe mill work holding right here. Self-center vices, and it looks like the Haas uh, 130 millimeter opening vice for oh it has it is a smaller one 75 for 800 bucks, and the other ones are for automation pneumatics. So I hopefully these are ones that we know work. Let's look at this one here. 130 millimeter self-centering vise. Yes, that, that would be my standard. It's actually a very good vise. We use them in Project MFG and uh, at schools here. Oh, I added it to my cost here. It's a little mini one. I Three inch is uh, usually it's the length of this jaw. So I would go with the five incher. It's a 210 millimeter platter. So you should have enough room for the... Probably even bigger vice, but we'll play around with that. That would that would be my recommendation on this. 
So we got our machine info, technical documents. Haas is very, very good at giving you all kinds of stuff. And also I have uploading the model. So I'm actually going to upload my model now in Fusion. Let me see if I can get this here. Uh, upload, select files, download. Nope, I just moved it. Oh, wrong page. It's the welding models right here. 350 HD models, and I think I use the XT file open and upload. Oh, here's another little side shot right here. Comparison file. Um, like I say, Haas has great, great documentation. This is the work envelope for each machine. So the 350 is not that much smaller work envelope than the 500. With 500, I was a big fan of, and the 750 was the original one. So it's the, they say the swing is about 14 and a half inches, and height is 15. So the yeah, pretty good. All right, let's see how this is doing here. Is this, uh, is this coming online here or what? Let's pause for a second. There we go. There we go, right there. Uh, so I want to have it in my... I don't know if... Uh, I don't think the this model is in the uh, machine simulation package. But... Uh, Oh, it gives you, that must be your, <laughs> how big a part you can do. So, yeah, that's pretty good. Let's see what you get there. Okay, that's about it for me. So, we're just waiting on delivery, which I guess we're getting sooner than I thought. So, and we'll be finally in the next-gen world in the 5-axis world. Okay, that's about it for me, CNC dude, signing off. Oh, wait a minute. What were some other things I was going to talk about was machines. Like, some people were talking about which machines to get. The DT machine is pretty good. It's a 30 tapers machine. I would probably go for the DM series. I was looking at comparing machines. DM1 right here. 66K, 40 taper, <clears throat> 10,000 RPM, uh, machine specs. I look at X-axis travel, 20 inches. Can you get two vices in a 20-inch travel machine? And it's 15 horse. It's like in the middle range of horsepower. Uh, what are the specs we need here? Feed rates. It's a pretty fast machine. So 2,400 RPM. So, I mean, inches per minute. So as far as a school scenario, I don't know. I, I'm not a fan of the fast machines for school scenario. And this is a tight area. But it's a compact area. That's the good thing about it. So as far as, you can always turn a lot of this stuff down. You can put it at 50% rapid, uh, lock students out from doing something with that. But as far as a small footprint machine, I... Uh, looking at this compared to the mini mill, right? Mini mill. Uh, redesign mini mill. All right. 40,000 for mini mill. The same 40,000, only it's an 8,000 RPM machine. Uh, specs would be 16 inches. So it's. I would probably go to the next size up. That's that's a pretty good machine, though. It's pro I'm looking at the... Let me look at the... 10 horse. It's got more, actually, more horsepower than the um, TM machines. And feed rates is 800. That's, that's kind of the ballpark of the VF machines as far as speed. Completely redesigned mini mill. Uh, I really like the TM. The TM now has a TM0P. Smaller footprint. 
Oh, I, I put the letter O, I think, by mistake. There it is. Smallest, most affordable. 38K. Which is uh, 6,000 RPM. 20 inch in the X. And feed rates are 400. So, I just think for for beginners, this is a, uh, a machine that doesn't move crazy fast. It's got capable machining at 6,000 RPM. It holds 10 tools. Can you get more tools with that? I don't know if you can or not. Specs. Tool changes. That case came as 10. I didn't, I didn't think they only came as 10s. Um, and actually, you can, you can run these on single phase power, so I could order one for my house. <laughs> that would be a nice thing versus a DM, so I could teach from home you know, if I had one of these. Wink, wink. All right. <clears throat> anyway, so just going over back to the UMC, this is the installation guide here. And a lot of little things you need to know before you bring it in. Your air connections, electrical install. We're doing three phase, of course. Have it all checked. Make sure you're reading uh, on the machine. This is, but you know, only the tech can power this up. Shipping brackets. I used to work for a machine dual deal. Rough leveling. Level, level, and then leveling your platter. Sweep check, and then you got to do the MRZP uh, calibration for the probes. That's a standard on any of these uh, <coughs> dynamic uh, work offset machines. All right. And loop check for the spindle and coolant tank. And calibrate your probe. That's about it. Okay. CNC suit signing off.